he's a bit concerned if there is a kickoff that's returnable that's the kickoff unit covering kicks hasn't had any experience in a game so far this year they still don't it's a touchback. So here comes Kate Klubnik second year starter out of Austin Texas Westlake High School one of the great programs in America and a tale of two games of course different competition as well Greg struggled like his team against Georgia magnificent against App State and it was really great to just see the aggressiveness on the downfield throws last year and against Georgia was not very accurate on the downfields. really didn't try him very often against that state. It was clearly a point of emphasis. He met the challenge and as a result the offense opened up to a ridiculous 50 plus point first half. He played the first half. He led them to eight consecutive touchdown scoring drives. He's on target to Antonio Williams for a six yard gain to the 31. And they'll line up quickly and spread the field with five receivers. They have a deep receiving core. They are without Tyler Brown today who was their leading wide receiver last year. They still have at least six they have faith in. That's Phil Moffa the running back very near the first down. They're going to mark him about a half yard short. Good start so far for Kate Klubnik. A couple of easy completions throwing to his right. As a right handed quarterback, you're usually more comfortable throwing in that direction. So it's good to get his game started by the offensive coordinator, Garrett Riley. They gave him a similarly easy throw to start the Georgia game. They missed a layup, and that was the harbinger of things to come. Big hole off the right side for Maffa. He bangs his way to the 45. For an 11 yard gain and a first down. And a nice job by the right side of this offensive line. And Moffa just cutting right off the right tackle. Blake Miller, third and short. And a good job, too, by Olsen. Pat Henry, number 11, the tight end, working across the formation, securing the edge, and picking up that third down conversion. Olsen, Pat Henry's become more and more of a factor, particularly in the run game. Here's Klubnik off to the races. They pick up right where they left. State 55 yards and a touchdown. Fifty five yards is the longest rush of his career for Klubnik. A tough start for Dave Doran. And the true freshman Nolan Hooser on for the extra point. So with Klubnik on the field for a half two weeks ago they scored eight consecutive touchdowns. First time they've ever done that in a half in the history of the program. Now they're nine for nine. And just a beautiful job here dialing it up by Garrett Riley. They fake the jet sweep working right to left get flow from the linebackers and they come back with quarterback counter with the guard and the left tackle are blocking and kicking out those linebackers which allows plenty of room for Cade Klubnik to hit that hole and take off into the open field. Just a terrific start for the Clemson Tigers. Klubnik had two rushing touchdowns last week. First multiple rushing touchdown game of his career. And here's Robert Gunn the third to kick off. And that is not returnable for Hollywood Smothers. So here comes C.J. Bailey to make his first start, and here's Molly McGrath. Yeah, that's right, Sean. Freshman quarterback C.J. Bailey told us when he walks out onto this field in this hostile environment, he will feel nothing but excitement. He said he doesn't get nervous and feels ready for this moment because his team believes in him. And when they were down at halftime last week, Coach Dave Dorn turned to Bailey and said, C.J., you're going to win us this game. And his teammates repeated that message to him all week long. And you can see that confidence before he ran out onto the field. I saw Bailey in the locker Locker room dancing and staying loose. His teammates say his confidence and love for the game is contagious, guys. And he exuded confidence, but not in a cocky way. His teammates have faith in him, say he's mature beyond his years. 
They give him a little gimme to Jordan Waters and the Duke transfer gets the Wolfpack off to a good start. That's a 14 yard play. Shelton Lewis made the tackle. I love the play call by Robert and I you get your freshman quarterback who I can tell you as a guy that's made that road start for the first time. I was a third year junior fourth year junior I was freaking out. So for a first year player get his game started get him on the move get him a nice easy completion and get the change rolling get the confidence building. Jordan Waters is the running back part of a trio they've been using to start the year. KC Concepcion catches the pass and he's their biggest big play threat one of the best receivers in the country. The ACC rookie of the year a year ago when he caught 71 balls and he is so important to their offense. They use him so many different ways in the run game last year. He had over 300 yards rushing. They'll move him in the backfield and slot out wide on jet sweeps even a little wildcat quarterback. So he is imperative to their offensive plan. Jordan Waters again. He's into Clemson territory and down at the 45. He was a part of the Duke victory against Clemson in the conference opener in Durham last year, which ended Clemson's streak of eight straight wins in ACC openers. When they brought him in, they anticipated him kind of being a bell cow, and they've decided to kind of split the carries a little bit. But the run game really hasn't gotten going just yet, in large part due to the offensive line being a little inconsistent. They're expecting that group to play really well against a talented defensive front today. They've also played from behind in all three of their games. They come in at two and one. Bailey is flushed by Trey Williams. Takes off running. Broke a tackle. And turned that into a gain of three. He's a big target. They list him at 6'6. He told us yesterday he's 6'7. Just a bust up front in protection. Right guard Timothy McKay slides to his left, leaves the defensive tackle completely unblocked. I mean, that is infuriating. If you are the offensive coordinator, Robert and I, you have a freshman quarterback. Your offensive line cannot be busting protections. Right there, they do. Fortunately, Bailey's athleticism gets him out of a jam. Here's Kendrick Raphael. Not much there. Barrett Carter, who missed a tackle uncharacteristically on the previous play, stopped that one for no gain. Third and long here from the Clemson Tigers. This is usually a situation where Wes Goodwin, the defense coordinator, brings pressure. Play a lot of man coverage and they bring pressure here. Third down, try to force it out of CJ Bailey's hands quickly. Let's see if they ramp up the heat against the freshman. Wes Goodwin in his third year as defensive coordinator. They fake the jet sweep. Bailey had room, but he couldn't get away from Trey Williams. If he had, he had plenty of green grass in front of him. And watch Trey Williams' eyes in the backfield the whole way. He's engaged with the center, Zeke Carell, and he's watching the entire time. Never allows Bailey to break leverage. That's extremely disciplined there by the deep to tackle. Not chasing the flow of the play from right to left. He stayed at home and made the tackle as soon as Bailey tried to cut it back. Great discipline there defensively. It's on fourth and seven at the Clemson 42. Dave Doran sends on Caden Noonkester, the punter. Nicknamed Nooner, so he should have a good day with the noon start. End over end punt and a fair catch made just inside the 10 by Antonio Williams. 33 yard punt. Clemson back on offense, up seven to nothing when we come back to Death Valley. The University General Scholarship Fund. Thank you, All State. Cade Klubnik, the longest run by a Clemson quarterback since Trevor Lawrence. 2019 the Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State from their own nine Klubnik throws incomplete too low to handle for the freshman Bryant Wesco at his coming out party against App State in his second career game three catches for 130 including a 76 yard touchdown pass so he ran past the defense on their third play of the game that set the tone Phil Moffa the running back. 
Lubnick completed his first 13 passes in their last game against the Mountaineers. Two for three this afternoon. NC State brought a blitz. Maffa runs right by it. Maffa down the sideline and out of bounds near the 45. Chased out by D.K. Kaufman. They'll mark it out of the 43-yard line for a pickup of 34. Man, this home run hitting ability in the run game now is something they haven't had a whole lot of. They had a big play against App State, but now two carries gone 20-plus yards, double their season total. Maffa had an 83-yard touchdown run against App State last week, the longest of his career. He's tackled there by Devon Betty. Four yards for the graduate student from Loganville, Georgia. Such a good runner, very patient, extremely powerful, but haven't had huge holes this year. Now he's starting to see some. Flutnick over the middle, another wide open receiver and a first down for the tight end, Jake Brinningstool, a gain of 18. Very nice start to the game for Garrett Riley, the offensive coordinator. They line up quickly, which they often do after a big play. The check down to Maffa, and he's down at the 31-yard line. Caden Foreman, the middle linebacker, made the tackle, and Maffa still down on the field after a gain of four. Look as Mafa's going to the ground, almost evades the tackle. And goes down hard on that right shoulder. Hopefully he'll be all right. Ball is presented by Tums Gummy Bites. Get fast relief of occasional heartburn. Use as directed. Back in Clemson, South Carolina, the home standing Tigers leading NC State seven and nothing. Looked like a shoulder injury to Maffa as he was tackled by Caden Foreman. He has that brace on that left shoulder, and as soon as he went to the ground, he kind of pointed to it, got up, and walked off under his own power. So a sigh of relief breathed, but hopefully he'll be able to return to the game. Second possession for the Tigers. This is second and six. And a man wide open, a touchdown! Antonio Williams! A 31-yard strike. And they've scored touchdowns on their last 10 possessions with Kay Klubnik at quarterback. And Nolan Hooser again, freshman from Cornelius, North Carolina. The extra point makes it 14 zip. And just a great job by Kate Klubnick. You're actually going to see Davin Van be allowed to kind of rush into the backfield because of the miscommunication because between the right tackle, Blake Miller, and Jake Brinningstool, but great job by Klubnick escaping, keeping his eyes downfield, and throwing it up to allow Williams to high point it and make the play in the end zone. And a great job, too, by Williams on the scramble drill, getting behind the defense and creating a big play. That could have been a sack last year, it might have been, but Klubnick making a heck of a play there. They just keep going up and down the field and doing it very quickly. That drive went 91 yards in just six plays and took a minute and 34 seconds. They scored 56 points in the first half in their last game here two weeks ago against Appalachian State. The most they'd ever scored in a half in school history. And they had 35 in the first quarter. The second possession for C.J. Bailey. Stay tuned for ABC. More top college football action today. 3.30 UCLA at number 16 LSU. And then the big one of the weekend tonight. Number 6 Tennessee. Number 15 Oklahoma at 7.30. Both teams undefeated. Tennessee's outscored their opponents 191 to 13 so far this year. I think we'll find out how good Oklahoma is tonight. <laughs> no doubt about it. And 
I don't know if NC State wants to hear about that differential. They played a big role in week two. Down 14 to nothing. Jordan Waters ahead for five. Took the handoff from C.J. Bailey. Just the second true freshman since Phillip Rivers to start at quarterback for NC State. The other was M.J. Morris a couple of years ago. And Phillip's the first true freshman quarterback to start here against the Tigers since Phillip in 2000. Grayson McCall. Three times Sunbelt Player of the Year, brought over this year from Coastal Carolina. Injured in their come from behind win last week against Louisiana Tech. Bailey blasted by TJ Parker. The ball's out and Clemson has it. Cade Denhoff recovered the fumble. Forced by Parker. What a job by Parker working against the left tackle. Anthony Belton just goes right around. They tried to move C.J. Bailey a little bit to his right, but not enough time for him to be able to locate a receiver downfield. And just a disastrous start, both offensively and defensively, from NC State. Their young quarterback puts it on the deck, but my goodness, that's a tough ask when the left tackle gets beat as quickly as he did. C.J. Parker. Had a tremendous freshman season a year ago, record setting in fact. Had just one tackle for loss through their first two games. You asked Wes Goodwin about that lack of production yesterday. Jay Haynes, the ball carrier, in the absence of Maffa, taken down by Devon Betty. And Wes Goodwin said part of it is that TJ Parker's getting more attention, but they were after him to play better. No doubt, and a lot of teams have basically said, hey, we got to get the ball out against Clemson's defensive line. Right now, they don't have the pressure numbers and the sack numbers that you'd like. That's because people are really playing against the strength of that team, the pass rush. Klubnik down the seam and a diving catch made by Troy Stolato at the three-yard line. It'll be first down and goal. They spot it at the four for a gain of 13. Trying to capitalize on the takeaway. Haynes. Got about half of what they needed. They think he has a bright future. Freshman from Roanoke, Alabama, gives them some speed in the backfield. We haven't seen a whole lot of those backs behind Phil Moffa. It's just been such a workhorse for them, starting really midway point of last year. But they like their depth at running back. They think they have speed and power with Haynes and Keith Adams, respectively. Haynes again spun around and stacked up by a proud Wolfpack defense. That's been the hallmark in these recent years under Dave Dorn and the defensive coordinator Tony Gibson. Out of the 3 3 5 alignment, they give the offenses a lot to consider. And twice now stuffed at the line of scrimmage. I would anticipate quarterback run here. If I'm Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator, Cade Klubnick's already broken free on a quarterback counter a little earlier. I would get Cade Klubnick on the move right here. Klubnick play fake, and he could not be more wide open. Antonio Williams, his second. And his ninth career touchdown catch. Not even 10 minutes gone by. They have 20 with the 21st to come. So here's Hooser, one of the most highly recruited kickers in the country. 66 high school field goals, the all-time national record. The extra point is good. Dave Dorn said we have to win the turnover margin. They're minus one now in that area. T.J. Parker forced the fumble. Plumnik is across the country are competing to be. The Taco Bell Live My Student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. Parents Weekend here on the campus of Clemson University.
And Robert Gunn. The touchback machine boots another. Well, we alluded to it going to break. Dabo Sweeney and Dave Dorn both talk a lot about winning the turnover margin because when they do, they win. Identical records for these two programs since the start of the 2020 season. When they win the turnover margin, they're both 21 and 1. And Dabo's team is plus one today. Yeah, and Dave Dorn said the three keys of this game win the turnover margin, don't beat yourselves with penalties and mistakes, and don't let momentum swing against you. Uh, I'd say 0 for 3 so far, which has resulted in a big hole down 21 0 on the road. NC State has won two of the last three in this rivalry, but both were in Raleigh. They haven't won here since 2002. They've dropped nine in a row at Memorial Stadium. Hollywood Smothers got smothered for a loss of two. Transfer from Oklahoma. He's from Charlotte. Was recruited out of high school by NC State. Dave Dorn said one of the things they do is they watch players from North Carolina who go elsewhere because a lot of times players go someplace and they're not happy and they want to come back home. They brought in four players this year, including Smothers from other programs who are from the state of North Carolina and have come back home. C.J. Bailey throws and it is caught. Nice throw with some touch to Keenan Jackson. The first catch of his career for the freshman Man, what a beautiful throw by the freshman. This is called layering the football. Up and over a defender who tries to stretch up and make the play. Khalil Barnes just not quite tall enough with the left hand. Drops it right in the bucket, and that is a big-time throw by the 18-year-old. He's three for three passing. Clemson brings some pressure. And Smothers spins across the 40. He has a distinct throwing motion low, especially at 6'7". And the NC State people talk about, well, Phillip Rivers <laughs> right. threw from a very low release point, and it worked out pretty well for him. Yeah, I mean, it used to be you can't throw sidearm, never throw sidearm, and then Mahomes started to do it after Phillip Rivers made it great for 20 years. And now it's perfectly okay, so it's a bit unorthodox, but it's very effective, especially at 6'7". Some debate whether or not they should alter it as he goes along he kept the ball bounced off the first hit but does not survive the second A.J. Hoffler with the original contact and then Barrett Carter helped finish him off and just a bad decision here at the end of the line of scrimmage you're supposed to read the end man of the line of scrimmage in the zone read situation well Barrett Carter stays at home and inside you have Hoffler who stays at home as well. It's just a bad decision by Bailey, but freshman, man, these things happen. Trying to make a play in a big hole, and it results in the third and long. He lost five. They've struggled to rush the ball all season long, and that continues so far today. Quick pass, KC Concepcion. The ball ripped out by Avion Terrell, and he picks it up. He's out of bounds back at the 38 yard line, but it will be Tiger Ball. There is a flag down at the end of the play, down at the five yard line as Terrell continued toward the end zone. The play had already been blown dead back along the sideline at the 38. Adam Savoie is the referee today. They're trying to sort this out. Adam Savoie impartial of course like all officials would we say he's Savoie fair. <laughs> I wish you had said that actually instead. <laughs> you could have kept that one in the draft. Well, 21 like nothing it. early. Yeah. We have to do the best we can. There you go. After the play was over there were fouls by both teams. Personal foul and necessary roughness. Offense number 65. And sportsman like conduct. Defense number two, his first of the game for removing his helmet. Those penalties all set. It's Clemson ball, first and ten. Jacarius Peak and Shelton Lewis. As Concepcion had it ripped out by Terrell, the brother of the former Clemson star DB. 
AJ Terrell. And how about the play, too? I mean, he's being blocked by Dakari Collins, somehow is able to break free of that and rips it away from Concepcion, only to go pick it up as well. And at the end of the play, the big hit resulted in the penalty. And a moment earlier where Shelton Lewis took his helmet off so offsetting but still a massive play for Clemson and they have Phil Moffa back on the field he takes the hand off and he might take it to the house touchdown 38 yards twelve straight touchdown drives Led by Kay Klubnik, but he didn't have to do much of that one. Just handed off to the big running back who just went over 2,000 yards rushing for his career. The 22nd Tiger all time to do that. I'm starting to think that the offensive outburst against App State was more about Clemson than it was about App State. Yeah, we asked Dabble Sweeney about that yesterday because App State did give up 48 at home on Thursday night to South Alabama. So are you is what you accomplished two weeks ago diminished at all by what happened against App State Thursday night? He said, no, not at all. We played really well. That's football. Well, it's not a fluke. And now the Georgia game, if anything, is starting to look like a fluke. <laughs> and it was interesting, Greg, talking to them. We did the Georgia game. They wound up, it was 6 nothing at the half, but they wound up losing 34-3. to three. You look at it, you say it's a one-sided game. They said, hey, we played with them. We beat ourselves. A misalignment on a key play. You know, a, a penalty at a crucial time. A missed assignment, a drop pass. And Kay Klubnik said the same thing we visited this week. They took confidence away from that game against the number one team in the country. And I, I think that's a great way. And Davos Sweeney's been doing this a long time. That's a great way to position your team. Like, hey, guys, let's look. Yes, okay, public opinion, people think we got crushed. But let's look at how close things actually were. And there were a lot of, lot of plays left on the field for the Tigers in week one. Another touchback for Robert Gunn. And here's Kevin Nagandi. John, good afternoon. Time now for all state check in book here. Ohio State at one point down seven nothing to Marshall in the shoe. Will Howard uh, Ameka Abuka to the house. Love the play. Kev. little wide receiver screen. Get the offensive lineman in front. Abuka takes it the distance. So all that real estate. Nice little run there and getting that block on the right side. They're up. Uh, meanwhile Chapel Hill James Madison going with the deep ball. Alonzo Barrett the Omarion the touchdown and right now James Madison with the lead back to you Sean and Greg. Keep an eye on James Madison under a great new cat coach Bob Chesney is Jordan Waters with a flag down back near the line of scrimmage on the near side of the field. Waters made it all the way out to the 48. Holding offense to the 54. Val Erickson transfer from Missouri who arrived in January in time for spring practice and wipes out a 22 yard play. It really kind of felt unnecessary too. It looked like Jordan Waters was going to be out the gate before Erickson grabbed that jersey. I mean really didn't impact the play that much at all. Trying to get a little bit of a different look up front. They've taken the right guard Timothy McKay out. He had a bust on the first play and put in Erickson. Unfortunately, he grabs a jersey and gets him behind the sticks again. C.J. Bailey has a man open and a completion. Justin Jolie across midfield. Tackled by Sherrod Koval. 36 yards on the gain for the Wolfpack to the transfer from UConn. I think they're excited about how Joe Lee's role within the offense is going to continue to grow. Everyone knows that Concepcion is their guy. There's no denying <laughs> you're not going to take targets away from him. But it does feel like Joe Lee can certainly carve out that role as a legitimate difference maker in a matchup nightmare at tight end. He caught 56 for the UConn Huskies last season. Including four against NC State. Bailey's five for five. Bailey is six for six. Zakari Collins, a transfer from Clemson. He played two seasons here. But he has another first down with a 14-yard pickup. 
So Bailey on target. Six for six for 92. He did lose a fumble. They lost another when Concepcion was stripped. AJ said he really benefited from coming in late in the first half last week when they were trailing Louisiana Tech 17 to 6. McCall got injured. And Bailey led them back through an interception very early, but then came out in the second half and completed seven in a row. Waters the ball carrier on the last play of the first quarter. Describe this offensive output from your team. Uh, explosive. Explosive and consistent. You know, they're just taking what's there. Our quarterbacks blossoming right before our eyes. This is two games in a row where we've come out of the gate first half and really played with a lot of precision. So long way to go. You know, just can't play to a scoreboard. You just got to keep playing to a standard, and that's what we're trying to do. All right, thanks, Coach. Okay. Well, we all like and respect Dabble Sweeney a great deal. And just for the viewers watching, that is his version of a one-word answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, he likes to expound. Yes, he does, and we appreciate him for it. One of the best ever in our meetings. Kendrick Raphael, the ball carrier on the last play for three yards for NC State. They bring a blitz, and it works. Sammy Brown, the true freshman, one of the top recruits in the country, he won the high school Buckus Award at Jefferson in Georgia. Dropped that play for a two-yard loss for Raphael. And watch how quickly and how well he times this up. I mean, he goes right past Val Erickson, the left guard, never even sees him, is even looking for him, and makes the play in the backfield. That freshman, he's got a very bright future here at Clemson. On for the field goal attempt. Now the same high school that produced Malachi Starks, the great safety at the University of Georgia. Here's Kanoa Vineset. Made a 52 yarder last week. First year starting kicker. He's made all five of his kicks so far. This one from 48. Very little breeze to speak of. And that one is no good. Wide to left. Snap was a little bit high for Aiden Arias. Let's look at our Sonic drive-in recap. It's all about the quarterback for Clemson. Just off the charts good. Picking up right where he left off against App State. Start with a little quarterback counter off the jet sweep. It's perfectly blocked. He's untouched. En route to a long touchdown run. Longest by a Clemson quarterback since Trevor Lawrence four years ago. And how about evading the rush? Busted protection up front. They cut loose the defensive end. Davin Vanny makes a play. And then a little later, selling out against the run is NC State. They go with the quick play action. He hits Antonio Williams in the back end. Just an amazing start. That's in three quarters because he played just the first half against Appalachian State. 31 for his last 34. Seven touchdowns throwing, three rushing. He flipped it to Bryant Wesco, and the freshman dropped for a two-yard loss by Bishop Fitzgerald. And they've scored 12 touchdowns on their last 12 possessions in the first half, all with Klubnik at the helm. I think a lot of people had unreasonable expectations for Cade Klubnik in 23, that he's just going to come right in and be the next version of Deshaun and Trevor Lawrence. Maybe it's taken a little time, and we're starting to see what he's capable of under center for the Tigers. Phil Maffa back in at running back. And the ball comes out. They're ruling him down at the 34-yard line. Brandon Cisse made the stop. Talented cornerback. Let's take a peek as Cisse. It's nice to get him back. I know Tony Gibson loves what he's capable of. Left elbow down right there before the ball is dislodged. Look from the umpire it appears and <laughs> just pops right out underneath a good call by the official three of the officials have mind fly cameras today will get some unique vantage points Klopnik throws incomplete for Troy Stellato and clearly it's time to change quarterbacks here at Clemson <laughs> he's human ladies and gentlemen but that was well covered I mean really the first time all day that we've seen a little life from NC State defensively, that would have been a tight window to fit it into, but given how hot Kate Klubnik's been, I'm surprised he didn't do it. So after 12 straight 
touchdown drives in the last two first halves. They're finally stopped. Aiden Swanson on the punt. Sixth year at Clemson. The 24 year old from Tampa. Third year starting punter. Short and tumbling and a fair catch made at the 29 by Jalen Coit. 37 yard punt. This is breaking stories, injury updates, previews right up to kickoff. And this week, two Monday night football games, 715 on ESPN, Jacksonville's at Buffalo, at 8 on ABC and ESPN Plus, the Washington Commanders and the Cincinnati Bengals. The matchup of Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks out of LSU. Alongside the national championship winning quarterback Greg McElroy, Molly McGrath on the field, Sean McDonough, delighted to have you with us. 28 0 Clemson, three minutes gone by, second quarter. Quick hitter to KC Concepcion, and he's dragged down by Wade Wood as. And it's a nine yard gain on first down. Well, they had 35 points and a 35 zip lead last week against App State. Up 28 0 at the end of the first quarter today. Dabble Sweeney's team, the first in FBS in the last 20 seasons to lead by 28 or more. After one in back to back games <laughs> getting it done on both sides of the ball too, forcing a couple turnovers cashing in just an incredible start to this game. Jordan waters the running back. He goes out into the pass pattern. Bailey cool as he rolled to his right. And he found Justin Jolie to the 50 yard line and a 12 yard gain for NC State. I know a lot of the attention is going to be on Kate Klubnick and what Clemson's doing on both sides of the ball but my goodness I've been really impressed with CJ Bailey. He's now eight for eight for 111 yards did have a fumble but this time takes a big shot and the guy that forced the fumble a little earlier TJ Parker still accurate on the move poised it's a pretty good start for him all things considered. He's already made the acquaintance of T.J. Parker. That's the kind that gets your receiver hurt. K.C. Concepcion on the slant and Khalil Barnes there for Clemson. Just the announcer curse right there. Been singing his praises. Not a single ball has hit the ground. It's come out of his hand. Started eight for eight. That one is first miss. And that one just a little bit too far out in front of the intended receiver. Almost resulted in a massive collision. Former starting quarterback Grayson McCall looking on. He's got to be pleased with what he's seen from the freshman. They have not disclosed McCall's injury. It is widely speculated he suffered a concussion against Louisiana Tech. Bailey with a flag down, another flag down. Concepcion has the first down if it stands. The two officials threw flags on this one. The play went for 13. There are two fouls on the play, both by the defense. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 15. That penalty's declined. Personal foul, face mask, number 99. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. A.J. Hoffler. And Hoffler working against the right tackle. Just gets that right hand up into the face mask and it's an easy call for the official who sees it. I mean never really lets go. And you see the sidearm motion there also at the same time from the quarterback C.J. Bailey. And nice throw out on the move. Bailey has been impressive. Kendrick Raphael is the running back they go to the reverse KC Concepcion scampers out of bounds with Wood as in hot pursuit short game Robert and I the offensive coordinator into the bag of tricks five minutes into the second quarter that's now a couple times on this drive where Wade Wood as has been following KC Concepcion all over the field first play of the drive there was a ton of space Wood as made the play that time there was a lot of space on the reverse looked like it might have been a pass if the guy wasn't covered and Wood as there to stop him I mean this defensive staff continues to sing his praise as a guy that's been very versatile in his career here early at Clemson well, as a safety now a linebacker will keep by Bailey he's in trouble how about that effort Bailey 
told us he arrived at about 176 pounds in January, got in the strength program, the nutrition program, and yesterday he said he was 206 pounds. He used that added muscle here. Man, did he ever too, and he got low too with the help of his slot receiver, Jalen Coit, who just continued to push and push and push to make this third and short. I would think this would be four down territory. They tried a long field goal last time. It doesn't look like field goals are going to do much good against this Clemson offense, which is on fire. Third down and one with Jordan Waters, the running back. And Jordan has the first down. D. Creighton, another true freshman, highly recruited, uh, recruited linebacker like Sammy Brown in on the play. And these young players on the defense got a lot of experience last week. One of the benefits of that big blowout the last game two weeks ago. 106 players played at least one snap for Clemson. They dressed 129. 46 of them were on the defense. Empty backfield. Bailey, the play fake. He gets wrapped up and taken down at the five. CJ from one of the best high school programs in America, Shamanad Madonna. Hollywood, Florida, three straight state championships. Had some great players around him. His parents are here today. Altranice and Watson. Nearly midway through the second quarter, NC State trying to get on the board. Man wide open, it's Jordan Waters with the touchdown. His first touchdown reception as a member of the NC State Wolfpack in his third TD overall for his new team. It comes from five yards. Just a terrific drive there by NC State. I mean, all the momentum on the side of the Clemson Tigers, but their offense, yes, they've made some mistakes with the turnovers, putting the ball on the deck twice. It resulted in Clemson points, but that was a big drive right there to swing momentum back in their favor and take advantage of a couple Clemson mistakes. Tanoa Vine set. Adds the extra point. Nine plays, 71 yards. Four minutes and 37 seconds. And C.J. Bailey. His first career touchdown pass. And his parents love it. All right, Kevin, thank you. Back here in Death Valley, 7.25 to go first half. Clemson leading 28 to 7. Jordan Waters' his first touchdown reception since 2021 when he played at Duke. Having some technical issues here. That's why, well, the score's back on the screen now. We had some cameras down, graphics go down. We're reestablishing contact with Bill Lamagne. Looks like the technical picture here is brightening, just as the <laughs> situation for NC State has brightened just a bit. It is, yeah. And they, hey, they, you could not have played worse in the first 10 minutes of this football game if you're NC State. A couple fumbles, things that you absolutely couldn't have. You put your freshman quarterback in a bunch of difficult spots. But the bounce back has been nice. And I've been really impressed with C.J. Bailey's poise, his accuracy, and the decision-making he's displayed so far. Dave Dorn is not surprised. He was seeing the praises of Bailey last night. Club Nick deep ball. Williams behind the defense. And it's incomplete. Covered by Brandon Cisse. Ball to me, Greg, a little bit late and underthrown because Williams had a little more space but had to wait for the ball to get there. Man, and, and if you look at Klubnik, he hitched two times. If you hitch once, this ball's up and down before Cisse can recover. Had he just anticipated just a little bit more, a little bit more down the field, it would have been less time. Still a very catchable ball and one that you'd hope your great receiver would make, but man, that felt like a big missed opportunity there for Clemson. Now the coaches felt he wasn't decisive against Georgia. That was a lot different against App State. Again, different caliber of competition. T.J. Moore, the freshman. Travali Price delivered a big hit on Klubnik. Cisse beaten in coverage. He was in coverage on back-to-back -back plays. 40 yards 
On the pass to the freshman T.J. Moore. Man, Klubnik got absolutely killed on the backside. Harris Sewell and Linthicum couldn't get there, but he still drops it in the bucket down the field. Keith Adams Jr. in a running back. Adam Randall the catch. Tough run after the catch to get the first down with a 13-yard gain. Randall, one of those who had a tough day against Georgia. Part of those mistakes that really cost him. He committed a couple of penalties on offense. Keith Adams Jr. tripped up at the 20, or he had more ground to cover. Bishop Fitzgerald made the tackle, the safety. And Devon Betty is the injured Wolfpack player. The returning starter at linebacker, a graduate student out of St. Thomas Aquinas in Florida. Uh, here at Memorial Stadium, 18 2 at home against unranked teams. NC State is unranked. Pitt and South Carolina, the two unranked visitors to win. Overall, in the college football playoff era over the decade, they're 66 and 3 here at home, including games against ranked teams. Kate Klubnik, 10 out of 13 for 128 and two touchdowns. They flip it to the speedy Cole Turner. Cole Turner gets a great block and a touchdown. T.J. Moore, the freshman, helped him finish the run. Cole Turner, sophomore from Vestavia Hills, Alabama, the Birmingham area. He's battled injuries during his time here at Clemson. 18-yard touchdown run. And the extra point good by Nolan Hooser. Another 75-yard drive in the blink of an eye. Five plays in a minute, 31. And Tony Gibson, the defense quarter, kind of ramped up the aggressiveness. They brought a few more pressures here in the second quarter so far. Just beat him around the edge that time. And you referenced it, Sean. Just a tremendous job. Out at wide receiver by the freshman, T.J. Moore, blocking for as long as he did. Might have gotten away with a little bit of a jersey grab there on the end of the line of scrimmage against Jihad Carter, but still one of the fastest guys on Clemson's roster, Turner, turns the corner and finds the end zone yet again, much to the delight of Davo Sweeney. The son of the late Kevin Turner, uh, NFL player who passed away a few years ago. Davo Sweeney promised to look after his sons. Nolan Turner played here as well. Robert Gunn sends it over the end line. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, injured NC State quarterback Grayson McCall has been side by side with C.J. Bailey all day. The first person to greet him on the sidelines, constantly coaching him up, giving him encouraging encouragement. And during pregame warmups, McCall held Bailey's water, even squirted water into his mouth, handed him a towel, toweled off his face. I have never seen an injured starter double as a water boy. The selflessness and humility is rare, guys. And a prolific player at Coastal Carolina passed more than 10,000 yards. There was a very high profile entrant into the transfer portal. Here's Kendrick Raphael. This offense has had some moments. And that one goes for 16. Barrett Carter the tackle. I think few people understand the relationship between starter and backup. And look, one guy might be the starter one week, the backup the next. But he has to be your best friend, your biggest supporter. He's the only guy that knows what you're going through that's been there before, that knows what it looks like when you stand back there in the pocket. So having Grayson McCall totally engaged is going to help C.J. Bailey tremendously in a hostile environment. It's good to know they have two capable quarterbacks. Their offense had actually been struggling in the games with McCall at the helm. K.C. Concepcion made the reception. Good for six. But they're used to this in Raleigh. This is the fifth time in the last six years that NC State has had to use more than one starting quarterback in a season. 
The only one to start every game during that stretch of a season was Devin Leary in 2021. Under five minutes to go, second quarter. Two to one edge in time of possession for NC State. So that's what that means. KC Concepcion had the ball hit him in the back. Just not on the same page, and even the incompletions have been pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Quarterback, of course, he knows what it looks like when that ball gets tipped up, and the call looks as puzzled as CJ Bailey did. They're one out of four on third down. Raphael, the running back, on third down and four. Wes Goodwin brings the blitz. Bailey got it off, but short. The throw under duress. Gerard Koval, the blitzer foremost involved in interrupting that throw. Well timed pressure there and a good call by defensive coordinator Wes Goodwin. I mean just complete overload on the right side. You see the offensive lineman point out to it but it's too late. There's two guys right in the face of C.J. Bailey and he just can't get enough on the ball to complete on the pass to Casey Concepcion. Would you think about going for this if you were in C State? It's hard to go for it here just because of how good the field position would be for Clemson in the event which you didn't get it. At fourth and one for sure but man at fourth and five it's tough. Defense has pressure on Nooncaster, who hit the ground. No flags. Now a flag thrown late by the referee. Trey Williams hit the kicker. And with only four yards to go, if that's the call, it's going to be a first down for NC State. There is no foul for running into the kicker. The defender was blocked into the punter. It's first down Clemson. And a 42-yard punt stands. Dave Dorn well out onto the field wants an explanation from Adam Savoie. Very frustrated. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's a lot of blocking right there. Andre Williams. It <laughs> didn't look like he was blocked into the kicker. And that's one I'm surprised that it didn't result in that five yard penalty. I understand Dave Dorn's frustration. Yeah, it, it appeared that initially there was some contact there, but he was clear of the contact and under his own power by the view I see. So I would have supported the call for the contact on the kicker. The voice of Bill Lemagne delayed that Bill along today. So Clemson starts at the 11. Troy Stellano. Bounces off a would-be tackler and fights all the way to the finish. Finally, Devon Betty got him down. Some of the tackling so far from NC State has been just terrible. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, that is awful by Kaufman. I mean, no wrap-up. You just hit him with the shoulder and he keeps running. And Stilato's feisty. Occasionally. What's the phrase Dabble used yesterday? Hot headed, <laughs> emotional, <laughs> yeah. competitive. Dabble loves him as part of this receiver group. Jay Haynes for nine more. And they'll line up quickly on second down and two. 340 to go in the half. 35 7. Clemson, five touchdowns and a punt on offense. More shaky tackling, and Haynes goes down at the Wolfpack 42 in the arms of Aiden White. And a view from the Mindfly camera on the umpire, Brandon Ellison. Yeah, and just a really nice run there by Haynes, splitting the defenders. Klubnik weaving his way near the first down marker. Inside the 35, they'll spot him out of the 33, just short, nine yards for Klubnik. You went back to that fourth down play a moment ago where they decided to punt with the way their defense is playing man I mean this is completely unrecognizable of a Dave Doran coach team. They are a proud group Tony Gibson's an excellent defense coordinator but my goodness man I mean the bad angles the missed pursuit not leveraging the football the missed tackles I mean this is unrecognizable for people that have watched this program for a decade plus. Haynes to the 30. I would say this if I'm NC State I would start using my timeouts right now. You need yeah. to get another possession if you know 
realistically it's highly unlikely you're going to make it a game but you've got to get as many possessions as you can. Absolutely. And I, I think too I mean, you get the ball so you could potentially have a two for one situation in the second half. So right now and there's there's a, some train of thought you call the timeouts before or after the two minute timeout. I believe in calling them before to give my offense a chance. Jay Haynes the running back. Club Nick low throw to an open receiver Cole Turner. Another one who was singled out for some mistakes in that opener against Georgia slid a little bit deeper down the depth chart last week as they came out with Wesco and Moore early at the wide receiver positions. At that time it was the throw that was the problem. Club Nick's 12 out of 16. They throw the flag. Klubnik in trouble and gets the throw off with Red Hippler and Davin Van chasing after him. We'll get to the two minute timeout. Offside. Defense number one. Five yard penalty. Second down. This is the two minute timeout. Davin Van was offside and he's also still on the ground. You're watching ESPN College Sin. This crowd hoping that the Tigers are beginning a championship drive in the ACC. They've won eight of them under Dabo Sweeney. They lead 35 to 7 at the two minute stoppage, and they're poised for more. Second down and five. Keith Adams Jr., the son of a terrific linebacker in the Clemson Hall of Fame in the late 90s, who was their honorary captain for that win against App State two weeks ago. And Adams has that nickname Hammerhead, and a guy that's built much like Phil Moffa, where really is powerful back between the tackles. They don't seem to have as much depth at running back of course last year they had the dynamic duo with Moff and Will Shipley play fake by Club Nick throwing the end zone looking for Williams for his third touchdown of the game it was a little bit too far for him just a little bit off the mark but man they are really really playing aggressively these last couple weeks man I mean as soon as they get First and ten plus territory. It's like shot. Shot is coming. They get one there. You have a chance. Hey, if you miss it, no problem. Us or no one in the back corner of the end zone. It's a pretty good throw. It's a tight window, and Williams almost reels it in. DJ Jackson, the injured player. And unfortunately, he's had a lengthy history of injuries. Let's send you back to the studio. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean, stay fuck off. He got in for 32 snaps in their season opener against Western Carolina. That was the first time he had played in a football game since 2020. His junior year in high school. Following that year, he tore his ACL, missed his senior season. He enrolled at NC State in January of 2022. First run in spring workouts, tore his Achilles. Rehab that for a year came back in spring of 2023 and halfway through that spring he tore his other ACL and missed all of last year. Jay Haynes touchdown Clemson. Tony Gibson like Greg McElroy and Booger McFarland can't believe what he's seeing. 19 yard run for Haynes and his first career touchdown for the redshirt freshman from Roanoke Alabama. So in the last two first halves for Clemson that is 14 touchdowns on 15 possessions and the one punt today the extra point good by Nolan Hooser. Just five guys in the tackle box for NC State, which means run all day long. They go with a quarterback draw to just get a little bit more separation, and you see the speed 
on display from Jay Haynes. He's the guy that they anticipate seeing his role grow more and more as the season goes along as a lightning to Phil Moffa's thunder. Great call there by Garrett Riley, anticipating a light box defensively and running it right up the middle for another touchdown. I misspoke. His second career touchdown for Haynes. He got into three games last year, scored one touchdown. Prolific high school player in Alabama. He had a game in high school. He rushed for 476 yards. Or Hanley High School. Sounds pretty good. Jacksonville. Pretty good day at the office right mm -hmm. there. Almost five bills on the ground. So the kickoff is a touchback. Just can't say enough good things about what Dabo Sweeney's team has done here today. And while NC State's had a couple moments offensively that feel pretty good. I mean, some of the questions that they've had, turnovers, they haven't had as many the first couple weeks. A couple today, the pass rush. Been very disruptive in the pass rush so far. A couple big hits on C.J. Bailey, a sack fumble, and then offensively picking up right where they left off in the first half against App State. Hollywood smothers the running back. Barrett Carter the tackle. And a timeout called by Clemson. Clemson, their first, 30 seconds. Well, Dabo Sweeney out for blood. <laughs> and my thing is, we said as we were broadcasting their game against Georgia, when are they going to take some deep shots down the field? They felt they tried that early and missed and got away from it. Of course, they've had a lot more time to throw the ball than they had against Georgia. More players certainly getting open. Wade Wood has put the heat on Bailey. It'll be third down and eight. So I guess the question is, Nationally, did all of us overreact to that, at least based on the score, one-sided loss to Georgia? 100%. Uh, but I, that's pretty normal in week one. But with Clemson, it's like people are, are anxious. Or they're just chomping at the bit to write them off. And yet, they're still a relatively young team when you look at some of their key contributors. They bring the pressure on Bailey, who pulls it down and goes down back at the 15-yard line. A slew of Clemson Tigers there for a loss of 11. And another timeout called by Dabo Sweeney. And this pocket just completely collapses. A game is called. You have movement and shifting, and they just completely overload the pass protection for NC State. Guys coming around the edge, guys up inside, and another big play. And a flag down. T.J. Parker, Clemson fans no longer asking where has he been. The flag was really late too, yeah, almost after some the stuff whistle. after the play. Parker had 12 and a half tackles for loss last year as a true freshman, the most in Clemson history by a true freshman, and five and a half sacks, third most by a true freshman. Only Dexter Lawrence and Tyler Davis had more. They came into today with just three tackles in their last game four for the season and one tackle for loss as you said earlier part of that is teams are throwing the ball very quickly they're trying to at least Man, I don't blame them either I mean just given how disruptive this defensive line was last year I don't blame them <laughs> they don't want to challenge their tackles with TJ Parker in a one on one situation so a lot have been getting the ball out but just hasn't really happened for him statistically very long conversation by the officials, which seems a little strange given the situation. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 74 spitting on an opponent. That penalty is enforced half the distance to the goal, and number 74 is ejected. As he should be if that's what he did. Clemson, their second, 30 seconds. Please reset the game clock to 57 seconds. So Anthony Belton, their starting left tackle, making his 25th career start, gone for 
the rest of the day and the ball will come back inside the 10 Molly and Sean to give context to that I was standing right behind that play and I could see an orange cleat from Clemson stomp down on C.J. Bailey's head and then Anthony Belton trying to protect his quarterback and went after the Clemson players after the fact I don't think the officials saw the stepping on a C.J. Bailey's helmet. Though. Well said, Molly. So, Noon Kester on the punt. Antonio Williams already two touchdown receptions. And an empty punt return back to the 27 yard line. I don't blame him if you know, he thought they were roughing up his quarterback, but don't spit. No. It's there's perfectly fine protecting your quarterback. It's it's admirable, but that takes it to the next level. And the official was right there and watched the entire interaction go down. I mean, cooler heads have to prevail. I mean, this is a guy that's played a ton of football, and I mean, you're anchoring the backside of the offensive line. I mean, you are too important to make a mistake like that. It's just keep your cool, man. It just can't happen. Well, here's the end of it, and that's the. Uh, uh, he, I don't think he actually stomped on his head, although it looked like it, I'm sure, from the sideline, but he did give a little shove on his way up. A great field position again. TJ Parker was involved in that play. Here's a screen to Brinning Stoll. And another first down for Clemson. They have one timeout left. It's an 11 yard gain. Dabble Sweeney's not going to use the timeout here as the clock stops for a moment to move the chains. They have plenty of time 32 seconds. And the timeout. Klubnik Maffa out in space. Goes out of bounds in the arms of Jihad Carter. For the seven yard gain, look for a moment like he was going to stay inbounds. So efficient, the decision making that's been on display so far from Kate Klubnik, getting through his progressions quickly, giving his receivers plenty of time to run after catch. But here, this part of the field, mid red zone, they almost seemingly always look in the direction of their big tight end, Jake Burningstool. North Carolina State, their first. NC State calls timeout. Someone's going to have to tell Adam Savoy they prefer not to be called North Carolina State <laughs> as an institution. Well, here's a look at today's college football rankings. The top 10 brought to you by Chick fil A. Texas with Arch Manning at quarterback against UL Monroe tonight on the SEC network. George is idle as is Alabama and the big game is Tennessee at Oklahoma the Sooners coached by Brent Venables the longtime defense coordinator here at Clemson. Yeah that's going to be an incredible game and everybody that's watching this as a Clemson fan they know what Brent Venables and that defensive staff are capable of and it'll be interesting to see how they match up against an offense that looks like it's unstoppable at the moment. Second and two. They're at the eight. Mafa has the first down. Didn't get into the end zone. Caden Fordham made the tackle. Clock stops to move the chains. They still have the timeout. And Klubnik spikes it. And some woofing as Davin Van dumped the right tackle, Blake Miller. This feels like something could be percolating. This could get a little testier, <laughs> feistier. I'm not sure what gave you that impression <laughs> after the whistle, and it's definitely a little chippy, especially with the frustrations you're seeing from NC State. 11 seconds and the timeout. Second and goal from the three. Klubnik. His receiver, Adam Randall, got tied up in some traffic with DK Kaufman. We saw the rankings Miami the only ACC team in the top 10 
Do you think Miami right now is the best team? Not based on what I've seen. I think this Clemson team against Miami would be one heck of an offensive shootout. Now I'm very impressed with what I've seen from Miami defensively and when they get Reuben Bain back I mean they're not even going at full strength right now their pass rush is ferocious so I think that those two are clearly a cut above everyone else in the ACC at the moment Florida State the preseason favorite off to a disastrous start NC State calls another timeout. Well, it's not the first time they've had an opponent put up 40 plus, but Cade Klubnick steps into great company. Jameis Winston, Lamari Jackson, Trevor Lawrence, the other three quarterbacks to lead their team to 40 points or more and a half against the Dave Doran defense. Yeah, two Heisman Trophy winners and a and a guy that probably would have won the Heisman Trophy in 2020 had he not missed some time with COVID. So. I would say like you said Sean, that's about as good a list as you can possibly be on if you're playing quarterback against the Dave Doran coach team. And there were many after that loss to Georgia who wondered if he was good enough to be the quarterback on a conference championship contending team. Throws that away he was well aware of the time didn't want to miss the opportunity for the field goal try on fourth down. But that's progress. I mean, I remember I, I called Cade Klubnick's first start a couple years ago in the Orange Bowl, and there was a situation at the end of half where he, he just didn't have enough awareness and allowed the clock to run, and they couldn't get any points and still any points before the half. This is progress, and I think it's easy to forget this guy has not played a ton of football, and yet he's playing his best football right now in start number 14 or 15. Nolan Hooser, two for two. At the beginning of his career as the Clemson kicker. That's a 21 yard field goal. There is a flag down. We saw who's gesturing to the sideline. Turn it down. I made the field goal. I want the points. Defense number 97. Penalty has declined. The field goal is good. That's halftime. Hooser, the uh, Clemson legacy, mom off the foot of Robert Gunn the third, the sophomore from Seminole, Florida. It's a touchback. A moment ago, Molly with Dave Doran. Yeah, that's right, Sean. NC State head coach Dave Doran wants his team to play tougher overall, especially on the offensive line. He wants to see more physicality and aggression from them, especially with their left tackle, Anthony Belton, ejected from the game. They're going to move their right tackle over to the left side. They're going to shift everyone around them, so he needs to see more physicality from that group. And he said C.J. Bailey needs to play better as well. He said we're playing on our heels. We lost our tough physical identity, and he challenged his team in the locker room to scratch and claw and earn that identity back guys. Bailey was 11 out of 15 or 135 and a touchdown. He did lose a fumble. And he jammed that into traffic and got away with it and a nice catch near the first down marker by Dante Daniels a tight end with Barrett Carter right there. He came up just short of the first down. Really tight throw. <laughs> you like to get your quarterback off to a nice start in the second half. A confident, easy throw. This was anything but. I mean, just threading the needle there between two Clemson defenders. And well covered. Great completion. And the first of his career for Dante Daniels, who arrived in January from Butler County Community College in Kansas. Played only five snaps in the first three games of the season for NC State. Noah Rogers. Another one of those North Carolina natives who started college outside the state and returned back home as a transfer. He was at Ohio State and transferred back in January. 14 yard gain for the Raleigh native. I think they're they are optimistic I think about their weapons with Casey Concepcion Rogers Justin Jolie those guys can play it's just the offensive line man it's been way too hit or miss. Jordan Waters. Tough run. Barrett Carter dragged him down. The starter's still in there on defense for Clemson. You know, Molly said Dave Dorn told her 
C.J. Bailey can be better, but I think if you're looking for bright spots as a Wolfpack fan, he's one of them. I would agree. I, I think he was decisive in the first half, and while, yes, there are a, maybe a moment or two you'd love for him to be able to maintain control on the sack fumble, but he was hit from the blind side. I mean, uh, I think he did kind of everything you could possibly ask him. Yes, there are a couple plays left on the field, but for the most part, man, freshman first start on the road, I give it a solid B-plus at, at worst. Three receiver bunch to the right. C.J. Bailey looking in that direction gets hit by Wade Woodass as he throws it away. C.J. Bailey, we asked him yesterday, what does that stand for? Cedric Jr. You mentioned he was on a prolific high school team, three state championships the last three years at Chaminade Madonna. One of his teammates, Jeremiah Smith, who's made a huge splash at wide receiver to start his career at Ohio State. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> imagine having C.J. Bailey, two top-level wide receivers, one at Ohio State, one at Miami, and then a running back that stayed in the ACC and went to North Carolina. Imagine they scored a few points last year. Bailey out wide, and a nice tackle. R.J. Mickens dumped Terrell Anderson. Short of the first down, Mickens, the veteran of that secondary, playing in his 50th career game. Graduate student out of South Lake, Texas. Fourth down and short. They're going for it. And why wouldn't they? Dave Dorn in his 12th year at NC State. Winning his coach in school history, as is Davo Sweeney at Clemson. Jordan Waters, the running back. Out of the gun, he's on the right hip of Bailey. Given time and throws well behind KC Concepcion with Khalil Barnes in coverage. NC State turns it over on downs, less than three minutes in to the second half. 45 7. Clemson. Just been a clinic offensively from Clemson. Kate Klubnik, quarterback counter off the jet sweep. First drive of the game, first touchdown of the game. You have a fumble a moment ago, a perfect throw to Williams, and then a great throw a little later down the sideline after he gets blasted on the left-hand side to another big play. Uh, away with one there. First play of the second half on offense for Clemson. Tried to throw it wide to Antonio Williams, and Aiden White closed quickly on it. So now 14 out of 22, that was starting this half, 14 out of 23 with that incompletion. Eight different receivers have caught passes. Troy Stilato went in motion. The handoff went to Maffa, who delivers the blow at the end of the run, an 11-yard pickup as he ran over Jihad Carter, who transferred from Ohio State after he transferred there from Syracuse. Just amazing to watch this offensive line and these running backs and and even Cole Turner getting involved in the run game along with Cade Klubnik. I mean just continuing to move defensive linemen off the ball. Over 100 yards for the second game in a row for Maffa. Klubnik another man open more bad tackling and then Adam Randall after he broke free from two defenders fell down to the 18 yard line. Just another nice throw, and there's been some leaky protection, and Klubnik's had to stand in there, deliver it accurately, even as he's going to get hit. Gets hit again, but doesn't affect where the ball is placed. And 15 plays of 10-plus yards, including 7 of 25 or more. Apple Sweeney used the word explosive with Molly in the first half, and certainly that's what they've been. Jay Haynes tackled by D.K. Kaufman. Caden Foreman also in on the stop. Fordham, their leading tackler last week in that win against Louisiana Tech. The son of Tom Fordham, who played offensive line at Florida State in 10 years in the NFL. On second and seven, Klubnik given a lot of time, has some running room. It looks like he picked up the first down. Chased out by Sean Brown. 
It was the starting free safety last season. Now a linebacker. They mark him out a yard shy with a six yard pickup. You'll see it well from the progressive pylon cam. Just barely out of bounds. Set up third and one, but a nice scramble there from Klubnik. He's rushed for 70, including that 55 yard touchdown run in the first half, the longest of his career. Trying to follow the lead block of Haynes, but that got stuffed for no gain. They picked up maybe a foot. Noah Potter in on the play. Fourth down, and they're going to go for it. Fourth and about two feet. Looks like Klubnik might go under center. Doesn't do that very often. Let me try to drag them offside, and he did. Wow. It's amazing to me, Greg, that happens as often as it does. It's amazing. Offside, defense number eight, five yard penalty, results in a first down. Dave Doran's suggesting that there was maybe some movement, but I didn't see anything at all Correct. from Clemson. You got to watch the ball. I mean, you know that Clemson's probably going to try to utilize a hard count, see if they can't draw you. And that time, NC State, with a pretty veteran group, still jumps off sides. Well, so often a team that's out of the shotgun all the time when he goes under center, that's exactly what he's trying to do. And if they do, in fact, snap it, State discipline and stop the play. Touchdown, Adam Randall joins the touchdown parade. They're over 50 again with 51 and the extra point still to come. First touchdown of the season for Randall, a junior from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So seven touchdowns, a field goal, and one punt in nine possessions. They scored on eight of them. And congratulations from his mates for Randall, who was in the doghouse after a couple of mistakes in their week one loss to Georgia. Bites is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Three touchdown passes today for Kay Klubnik. I don't know how they have any push-ups left in the tank. <laughs> Adam Randall's touchdown, the first of his career, came very highly recruited, one of the top wide receivers in the country. And his career really got derailed a bit before it even started when he tore an ACL in spring practice. But he is a talent, as is Robert Gunn, who kicks another touchback. Here's Adam Randall. 28th career game, I think, given all the hype that he came in with, he was number 114 in the ESPN Top 300 in his recruiting class. He was rated the 15th best wide receiver in the country. Took a long time to get that first score. And they continue to recruit top wide receivers Wesco and Moore both in the top 100 the last recruiting class flag thrown as Bailey tried to get it to Keenan Jackson and Jaden Lucas is going to be flagged defense number 10 15 yard penalty automatic first down you look at the wide receiver core though for Clemson now I mean with the additions of T.J. Moore and others, man, they got a chance. And here you see the obvious pass interference call, very easy call on the deep throw as Lucas never really tries to look back. Look at these wide receivers for Clemson. It's been a bit of a headache. They've had injuries at the position. They've lacked some depth. They've been a little bit, at times, too lenient on slot guys. But, man, now with the emergence of Wesco, potentially, T.J. Moore, maybe you can continue to get Adam Randall to come along. This might develop into a very deep group that's versatile can beat you a lot of different ways. 
Penalty takes the ball to the 40. 15 from the line of scrimmage. C.J. Bailey designed rollout and a nice throw to Wesley Grimes. Transfer from Wake Forest. Also a Raleigh native has come back to his hometown. That's good for a 23 yard gain. This is really an opportunity for Dave Doran and, and his offensive coordinator Robert and I to really evaluate who you have at this point games out of reach. No doubt about it. But you can evaluate the effort level with players on both sides of the ball who's finishing who's playing as hard as humanly possible regardless of what the score is and those are the guys you might be able to depend on as the season moves along. Here's a reverse Casey Concepcion stepped inside to avoid a loss. Shelton Lewis knocked him down. Well, we saw in the last throw the throwing motion by C.J. Bailey and that's a little more sidearm than usual but he does deliver from a low release point. He told us yesterday Kurt Roper the quarterback is trying to get his arm higher and the ball higher. Now, Dave Doran said at this point there's so much muscle memory. He thinks just leave well enough alone. He's gotten to this point throwing the way he does. What would you do as a former quarterback? I, I think no matter what, you can work it and you try to get higher. But as soon as the bullets start flying on game day, you're going to revert back to who you've always been. There's too much muscle memory built up. So I'd work on just maximizing the current throwing motion that he has, as opposed to trying to alter who he might ultimately become. Kendrick Raphael stopped for a loss of one. It's kind of like when you take a golf lesson they try to fix a couple things and then you go out and on the second <laughs> hole you're already back to your same lousy grip and alignment and swing. <laughs> His uh, delivery isn't lousy in for Grayson McCall today and it's certainly been effective. Third down and nine seven minutes to go third quarter they're one for seven on third down today. And Clemson showing blitz. Bailey down the sideline lots of contact there and another pass interference call upcoming this one on Shelton Lewis who had the coverage on Keenan Jackson number two 15 yard penalty and an first down and it's interesting because to me when you think of low deliveries one of the first people you think of is Philip Rivers who had a tremendous career at NC State and is perhaps on his way to the NFL Hall of Fame as well. Yeah, and you look at the delivery. I mean, Philip Rivers, very much sidearm, kind of people kind of called it a bit of a shot putting motion, but it was effective. And I think Philip Rivers opened the door for guys with unorthodox deliveries. Not how it looks, it's how it gets there. And where is it when it arrives? So I think Philip Rivers really opened the door for a lot of folks in that regard. And another blitz. They're not taking it easy on the freshman in his first start. And there's a third pass interference call as KC Concepcion tried to come back to the ball. And Ashton Hampton, the true freshman out of Tallahassee, another good looking cornerback at 6'2, 200. Defense number 23. 15 yard penalty. An automatic first down. Made the tackle. You know, to Dabo Sweeney's point, we, one of the reasons we don't go to the portal very often is because we continue to recruit the top players in the country, including Hampton. Well, last week they put in all kinds of substitutes. It was fun to talk to Wes Goodwin, the coordinator. Yeah, it's great to get people experience, but you know, at the same time, you coaches kind of like the stats too. <laughs> App State wound up scoring 20 points, a lot of it against the uh, third, fourth, fifth stringers. There's a walk-in touchdown for Kendrick Raphael. <laughs> Coach Goodwin in anguish on the six-yard touchdown run by the sophomore from Naples, Florida. Just to walk in, too. I mean, it's one thing if a guy scores, but I mean, this is by far the biggest hole that an NC State ball carrier has seen all day long. So now starting to mix in some guys that did the twos and the threes, you still want to see him perform at a high level. So I understand Wes Goodwin's frustration. That's valuable experience that will probably pay dividends down the road as injuries pile up as they do on any team. He's coaching up some of the youngsters. Tanoa Vine set added the extra point. <laughs> Would you know they're ahead by 38? Oh. 
Arch Manning gets his first start. So get ESPN Plus, download the ESPN app, or go to ESPNplus.com. Colin Smith kicks off. And it's another touchback. So this week, Kate Klubnik plays a little more than two and a half quarters. He played just the first half. Last week, last game two weeks ago in Appalachian State, he was relieved by Christopher Vizina. And that is who will take his place here. Redshirt freshman from Birmingham, Alabama, Briarwood Christian. And another top recruit. When they recruited him. They told him the plan was for him to redshirt, develop, and that's what he did last year. Dabo Sweeney very high on Vizina. Executes the fake, throws it out wide to Adam Randall. And another big gainer for the Tigers. Shoved out by Rente Hinton. Nineteen yard pickup. I think Vizina was a guy that they think has a very high ceiling in time, but last year would not have been capable of stepping in and, and being an effective replacement for Cade Klubnik, but they're really proud of his growth this offseason and feel like, God forbid, if Cade had to miss a little time, the offense wouldn't drop off anywhere near as much as it would have last season. They bring pressure toward him, didn't get there, and he throws complete into NC State territory to Adam Randall. Was that a big second half? Brandon Cisse had the coverage. Nine more for Clemson. Ironically, one of his best games ever, Christopher Vizina, was actually against Pelham High School. Now, he went to Briarwood, and Pelham is the alma mater of Dabo Sweeney. So I, I wonder if, you know, maybe that comes up every once in a while between the two of them. I would think it might. <laughs> Keith Adams on second and about a foot got enough for the first down. Isaiah Shirley on the stop for NC State. They're getting some backups into the game as well. You know, we talked to Dabo Sweeney about Vizina yesterday. He liked everything about him. He's a very good thrower, athletic. That pass is deflected. Great competitor. Noah Potter knocked that one down. Got into two games, nine snaps last year in real mop-up duty and red-shirted. Played most of the second half against Appalachian State last week, went seven for 11 for 78 yards. He also ran one in for a touchdown from five yards out. They wound up playing four quarterbacks last week. That might happen again today. There's a blitz. He got a hit. He lofts it up, and it's incomplete. T.J. Moore, the fans want a flag against Corey Coley, and they're not going to get it. Reps like this, though, are so valuable when evaluating what might be your future starter at quarterback. You don't hit the quarterback in practice, but to see Vizina deliver a pretty accurate throw on the double move slant and go, one that Moore almost got to. The fans here wanted a pass interference. I'm fine with the no call, but that's a good rep to evaluate. Still accurate under duress. They're going to blitz him, and he goes down for a sack. Sean Brown led the way for the Wolfpack defense for a three yard loss. Their leading tackler for the season starting today. Taking over at Will Linebacker in the big shoes of Peyton Wilson, who won the Buckus Award as the nation's best linebacker last year, and is now in the NFL with the Pittsburgh Steelers. What a player he was. He was so much fun to watch. Just always all over the field every single time you watch NC State, man, they miss him for sure. But Sean Brown, an impossible task of filling that role. Aiden Swanson to punt. Jalen Coit back for it. They brought a rush. They hit Swanson. Flags thrown. And the 
punt handled at the five yard line by Coit. Looked like Kanan Jackson was the one who made contact with Aiden Swanson. But it's just going to be a five yard penalty and it will not give them a first down. So Adam Savoy asking Dabo Sweeney what he wants to do. Running into the kicker, defense number 82. Penalty is declined. First down. 42 yard punt. Peaks and valleys. Well, power their dynasty in the ACC for a while. But they look like a team in the expanded playoff with a, certainly a chance to make it. As we go to 12 teams this year, an automatic berth for Power Four Conference champion. Hollywood Smothers got smothered by Ashton Hampton for a loss. Back to the four yard line. I think it's going to be really important for Clemson to continue to put forth really impressive performances. I'm not saying you need style points necessarily, but in the court of public opinion, based on how they played against Georgia, they don't look like right now they're at that level in the court of public opinion. But based on the last two weeks, man, they're playing as well as anybody on both sides of the ball. So I think it's going to be very important for them to continue to get better than when they get that chance to play against the likes of Miami to really throw a punch because Right now, I don't know if the ACC is going to get two in. But man, Miami and Clemson would be a pretty formidable Time duo. Out. NC State, their first, 30 seconds. NC State calls a timeout with second and 12 upcoming, deep in their own territory, down 52 to 14. There's their remaining schedule, and according to FPI, they're going to be favored to win every game remaining during this regular season. They do not play Miami. I was going to say they don't play the Harvard of Central New York, Syracuse <laughs> University, but a little steam came out of that with the loss to Stanford last night yeah. in the Dome. To the Harvard of Palo Alto uh, at Stanford, but you see it there. I mean, a road trip to Florida State, that's always a tough game. I know the Knolls are down. You have to go to Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech's been a bit of a disappointment here for the first three weeks. I really like Louisville. I think Louisville's excellent. But to come in here to Death Valley, where I think two teams have won, in my lifetime, I think thereabouts, that's going to be tough to do for sure. And then finally, playing against South Carolina, who, while their quarterback Lenore Sellers is banged up, that defense has been unbelievable here through the first three weeks. So it's going to be fascinating to watch this team continue to progress. I think their best football might still be in front of them. Bailey out of the end zone, throws incomplete to KC Concepcion. <laughs> Well, one of the things that C.J. Bailey talked about when we visited about his throwing motion as part of our conversation yesterday, he said sometimes from this release point, he tends to throw sinkers. The ball dips down into the ground. So that's one reason why he is eager to at least try it with Kurt Roper, see if he, from a higher release point, can not throw those sinkers. Yeah, that nose down football is really difficult on the wide receivers to reel it in. Third down and 12. He got it off quickly. Justin Jolie, it's incomplete. Tyler Venables in coverage. He'll be watching his dad, Brent Venables, tonight. That big game on ABC at 7.30, Oklahoma hosting Tennessee. Tyler was not able to play in the first half today, targeting ejection last week. And not shockingly, Devil Sweeney told us yesterday that Tyler wants to be a coach. But I guess it is kind of shocking when you grow up around coaches to see what they have to go through that people still want to coach. Caden Noonkester. Short punt. Cole Turner busy waving the traffic away. Probably wishes he had fielded that on a bounce. 49 yards, the punt rolled dead at the 48-yard line of NC State. Let's put a bow on the performance from Kate Klubnick. Started early, first drive of the game, quarterback counter off the jet sweep, and he's out the gate untouched all the way to the end zone after a 55-yard run. And how about the vision? This is where he's progressed. Look, there's still pressure in his face. He knows he's going to get hit, but he gets off number one, gets to number two, throws an accurate ball over the middle of the field. He has been really solid today. The numbers are not eye-popping. But some of the ball placement, where he's been able to get through progressions, using his legs at times to escape trouble, I think he's had as good a game this week, even though statistically not, 
as good a game this week as he had a couple weeks ago against lesser competition in App State. Jay Haynes taken down by Sean Brown. If those aren't eye popping, <laughs> what is? I mean, the numbers from the App State game we Ridiculous. mentioned at the beginning of the telecast. <laughs> He put up numbers that nobody has in the last 25 years in FBS football. And yeah, the yardage numbers were down today, but he played two and a half quarters, a fraction more than that. And they ran the ball all over the place. Right. And they've run for 247. And he's been a big part of that himself. High throw by Vezina off the hands of Troy Stellato. Sometimes it's the hidden yardage, too. I mean, he had the deep ball post that was. Maybe the tiniest bit late, but one that his receiver could have definitely caught. That's a 40, maybe a 45 yard gain right there. Had a couple others that were just the tiniest bit off the mark, but man, he's been super efficient, very decisive. And I also, I love how he's using his legs too to, to open things up in the run game. Third down and 10. Very balanced today, Clemson. 247 rushing, 237 passing. Vizina runs away, showing that athletic ability to dabble. Sweeney talked about, and it might be coming back. There's a flag thrown by the center judge back behind the line of scrimmage. The two fouls on the play, both by the offense. Holding, number 22, penalty is declined. Holding, Holding number 52, 10 yard penalty. It's third down. Elijah Thurman, when he left tackle, a part of that. You know, Garrett Riley said he got about 30 snaps against App State, wasn't expecting to. There's his hold. Yeah, you see the left hand, number 52, Elijah Thurman. And pretty obvious when the defensive player's jersey is completely up over his shoulder after the play, kind of have a pretty good guess as to where it's going to go. Here comes a blitz again on Vizina after the penalties took away a 22 yard play. Haynes ankle, ankle tackled by Fordham and then kind of threw his leg down to the ground after he made the tackle. Nine yard gain. And Swanson will punt again. I don't think there's going to be a lot of holiday cards sent uh, from one side to the other after this performance. There have been. Uh, visible signs of frustration from NC State really all throughout. And there have been some moments too where, where Clemson has certainly elevated that level of frustration. Well, they entered the season, some thinking they'd be a contender in the ACC. I and mean, again, it's very early. This is their first conference game, but this start to the season not encouraging. Line drive punt by Swanson late flag thrown as Jalen Coit went out of bounds on the far sideline. Flag thrown by the umpire in the middle of the field. 38 yard punt 16 yard return if it all stands. But even though NC State came here two and one they had a rally in the fourth quarter to beat Western Carolina. And last week they were down 17 6 at home to Louisiana Tech and had a rally to win. There has not been an impressive start. They're going to be 2 and 2 when this one's over. There is no foul on the play for holding. First down. More action on ABC still to come, including Garrett Nussmeyer and LSU at home tonight in Baton Rouge. At 3:30, ranked number 16. Big win for them last week. You talk about a narrative around a program. They went down 17 to nothing at South Carolina. Lenoris Sellers was injured, the quarterback for the Gamecocks. The game completely turned. LSU rallied to win late. Yeah, and they were very fortunate, but they got some question marks on defense. I wonder if UCLA can maybe try to exploit those. There's an interception picked off by Ashton Hampton, the freshman, with lots of blockers. A touchdown. If 52 from the offense wasn't enough, here's six from the defense. 47 yard return for Hampton.
Extra point good by Hooser. It is 59 to 14 with 32 seconds to go in the third quarter. And a great job here by Hampton. They're on the last drive. There were three different penalties against Clemson corners where underthrown deep balls resulted in a PI. This time he sees the ball, stops, makes a play on it on the underthrown deep ball and adjusts and then runs up the sideline for the pick six. That's just a great job of acknowledging a tendency on the last drive and then applying fundamentals to it the next time out and then taking advantage of a quarterback that tries to use the same bag of tricks. Ashton Hampton. The touchdown didn't arrive until July of last year. Here's the son of Alonzo Hampton. Coach at Arkansas Pine Bluff. He played in NFL Europe with Mike Reed, who's now Clemson's cornerback coach. Played with the Frankfurt Galaxy, so Reed well aware of what Ashton Hampton can do. The kickoff's a touchback. Here's Molly. Well, before we get to Molly, let's go to the studio. Sean Kevin Nagani here, and let's get an update with Chapel Hill and what's going on in JMU and the Dukes. This offense, Alonzo Barnett, look at the time he has there. Right now, it's 60 to 32. Both teams, remember, undefeated. That game on the ACC network and JMU in control coming up here in just under an hour in Baton Rouge. LSU hosting Ethan Garbers and UCLA. That game you'll be able to see on ABC. Back to you. All right, Kevin, thank you. On first down, Kendrick Raphael, the ball carrier. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, you can see this Clemson team still not letting up despite the deficit. Coaches and starters are coaching up the second and third string guys, uh, telling them not to let up. And Wes Goodwin, their defensive coordinator, especially hard on his young defensive players, demanding perfection. And it paid off with that pick six. And Kate Klubnick told us, remember, their goals are still in front of them. It definitely helps getting reps for some of their younger players as well. Clemson leads 59 to 14. ESPN's presentation of college footballers. 9-11, 2001, running back into the building to help rescue other people. Also available on the ESPN app. Always a very special night at the Heights for the Red Bandana game. C.J. Bailey on target. Justin Jolie crosses midfield on the first play of the fourth quarter. That's a 25-yard gain for NC State. Trying to avoid the largest margin of defeat in the history of this rivalry, and this is the 92nd meeting dating back to 1899. They lost by 45 here in 2019, 55 to 10. So right now, this would match the largest margin of defeat for NC State in this rivalry. In the battle for the Textile Bowl. Kendrick Raphael threw a big hole, and he's down inside the 30. 18-yard gain for the sophomore Raphael. It's been a strange game for NC State, too, because at some points, their offensive line is creating huge holes. This is even when the starters for Clemson were in. And then at other times, it's like they can't do anything right. It's two steps forward, two steps back almost all the time, and it's got to be kind of infuriating if you're the offensive staff to see moments where you're feeling pretty good about what you have offensively, only to see them come crashing down a moment or two later. Raphael again. And again, there are a number of subs on the field for this Clemson defense. Seven yard gain. Caden Story, one of those substitutes in on the tackle. He was not even listed on their depth chart, and they list a lot of people on their depth chart. It's just so, so valuable. This year more than ever before. Knowing the possibility that lies in front of Clemson, and hey, God willing, you play 17 games perhaps in today's day and age in college football. I mean, that's a real possibility, up from 15 in the 14 playoff era. So being able to get your starters out, limited snap exposure is huge, huge to be able to get these reps and challenge your depth. Hollywood Smothers breaks a tackle on the corner, lunging for the pylon. It looked like he got knocked out of bounds just shy of it. 
Brandon Strozier missed the tackle and that helped Smothers go all the way down near the goal line. Tyler Venables knocked him out. Big collision here is the progressive bylon cam. See a massive, massive collision there. Mark just short. I think that's probably right too. It's it's tough to get an exact of exactly where his body went out, but I think where they have it spotted right outside the two, it feels about right. 21 yard gain. Smothers into the end zone. Touchdown, Wolfpack. And this is eerily similar to the Clemson game two weeks ago when App State wound up finishing the game at 20 points, playing largely against subs in the second half. Yeah, the final score was not indicative of just how one sided that game was a couple weeks ago. Kanoa Vine set adds the extra point. Mothers the touchdown. Well, how about these two schools? Last season, the NC State men's and women's hoop teams made it to the Final Four under the leadership of Boo Corrigan, the athletic director, and the Clemson men went to the Elite Eight under Brad Brownell for the first time since 1980. Well, we mentioned they're playing for the textile trophy here. There was a trophy presentation earlier this week that was special to a lot of the people on our crew. Uh, earlier this week, it was announced that the Baseball Writers Association of Kansas City, their local chapter, was renaming their Good Guy Award to a Royals player, which they award every year, the Mike Swanson Good Guy Award in honor of Swanee, who has not long ago retired after 15 years as vice president of the Kansas City Royals and a long career in baseball. Now our statistician, he has to do something in retirement. <laughs> He's still the best. Still hanging. But if there's ever been a more aptly named trophy, I don't know what it is, because Swanee is the all-time good guy, and we are so happy for him. Yeah, we love him. And Swanee, we love you, buddy. You're the best. There could never be a more appropriate name for an award that is in your honor, my friend. Good guy award. And the best. And a legend in the game of baseball, not just in Kansas City, he's in the Missouri Athletic Hall of Fame. And we are blessed to have him. He started out doing stats uh, basically right out of, well, you were still in college, Swanee, at KU, Kansas, for Keith Jackson. <laughs> so that part of his career has gone way down. I would say, level of, <laughs> level of announcer. Uh, I'm sorry that you had to settle with us, Swanee, but we love you. And I'm sure he's watching his Jayhawks on some type of monitor over there in the corner as they take on West Virginia right now. And we appreciate the benefit of having a great stats man like Swanee in a game like this where so much is happening and records are being set and he's just all over everything. <laughs> David Ezio Mume is in it running back now as they go even deeper down the depth chart. Nice tackle. Josh Sapp planted by Sean Brown. Sapp's a tight end. It's his Second catch of the season. This one good for four yards. And they're going to give the backup punter a chance. <laughs> How he many played player? 106 yeah, last 106. week? It might be more this week. <laughs> Jack Smith is on to punt, sophomore from Sarah Land, Alabama. is the second punt he got one punt off last week for 40 yards or the last game I keep saying last week it was two weeks ago Jalen Coit brought it back occasional heartburn use as directed Cade Klubnik another huge game 209 yards passing three touchdowns in two and a half quarters Clemson with a 59 to 21 lead and the new quarterback in the huddle for NC State Lex Thomas a red shirt freshman from Wake Forest North Carolina to Heritage High School. 
CJ Bailey likely done for the day 21 uh, 25 attempts rather 16 completions for 204 a touchdown and an interception he was sacked twice Jordan Waters dropped on the corner by Brandon Strozier Lex, six yard game and Lex Thomas the brother of, of Bayer Thomas former outstanding wide receiver for NC State and brother Drake as well and he actually had an offer from Dave Doran before he ever started the varsity game in high school so <laughs> clearly liked what the Thomas family had provided NC State in the past and said yeah we'll definitely take Lex as well. Throws short and incomplete through the hands of Justin Jolie. Sammy Brown there. Lex Thomas arrived in January 2023. Missed spring practice though as he was recovering from an injury. It'll be third down and four. Most of the fans have left on what has become a very hot afternoon here in the upstate of South Carolina on the last day of summer. Temperature into the 90s. Kendrick Raphael down the sideline. They can't get him out of bounds, and finally they do inside the 10. Ricardo Jones, the freshman, was the last line of defense, stopped it, but it was a gain of 40. Pretty good job here. This backup offensive line has done a pretty good job. The running backs, I mean, these are guys that are trying to get more touches with Kendrick Raphael and Hollywood Smothers, a little younger than Jordan Waters, and likely going to be a, a group here in the future that will get more and more carries as they continue to get comfortable. I think they like the explosiveness that you have in Raphael and Smothers, and that might be what this offense needs in the future to create more big plays. Raphael, 94 yards rushing now on 10 carries. And a touchdown. Demarcus Jones is in at running back, and he has a touchdown. <laughs> so you would not expect an NC State team to pack it in, and they haven't. They're going to fight all the way to the end. Six yard touchdown run. Getting everybody involved here, and Demarcus Jones is often used as a fullback in some of their two back looks. They throw him a bone on the goal line and, and get him in the end zone for some for some much needed love. Tanoa Vine set. Adds the extra point. NC State has outscored Clemson in the fourth, 14 to nothing. It's from a unique approach. Coach Dave Doran hired Dan DeLuise, a breathwork coach, to teach players techniques through breathing and meditation and leaders like Davin Van really bought in. Van said he used to feel out of control during games because he was too passionate, couldn't control his anger. Now he said he's clear headed, calm, a better player. And the rest of the team kind of bought into it because he's such a leader and DeLuise will be with the team for every game. He will make breathing corrections in game or at halftime if prompted by the coaches. And I'm sure they've needed him today, but still a really different kind of approach for self improvement guys. Dan Doran swears by it said it really helped him and it's a coaches and and their staff will try to find an edge. They're going to need some relaxation after I, the I, game today. Yeah I think or watch some he might need to stick around and be in the building when they watch some of the tape with the coaching staff. We have many members on our crew whose breath could use some work as well. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Here's Trent Pearman for the second straight game. Pearman was the third quarterback in against App State. He's the third today. And that's a tough run. And a very late flag thrown. A helmet came off. An offensive lineman for Clemson in the middle of the field. All right, Adam. There is no foul on the play. And then we'd like that 30 seconds of our lives back. <laughs> How's your breathing? Uh, not great, you know. I struggle a little bit uh, walking up and down stairs in my advanced age and 
physical fitness level. But I, I remember. He He's aware now that he was on TV. Molly McGrath was talking wow. about me. There's a career highlight. <laughs> The thing that's amazing, though, it's like you talk to the guys that played back in the day, you know, the guys that, well, for us, I mean, I guess when I, I played back in the day, now, 09, 2010, but you talk, we didn't even have water, you know, guys say we didn't have water, we didn't have this, we didn't have that, we barely had helmets and jerseys, and now they have hot tubs and cryo chambers and Cold Are you tubs aware of any other breath work coaches? I've never heard of it. You know, it was on the graphic, like, oh, yeah, he's, he's the breath work yeah. coach, but... I, I didn't know. I don't know if he has competition in that business. This was probably not the greatest result for his business today. <laughs> but the, Molly, the players and coaches really do swear by him, and we're having fun. But you know, it's something that probably we could all benefit from. Yeah, and Dan started with the special forces, and he still coaches people in the special forces, um, and kind of takes that approach with football players as well, with mental toughness, ice baths, different breathing techniques, meditation. Uh, Friday nights before the games, he does a meditation um, routine with the players, and a lot of guys are snoring by the end of it because they're so <laughs> relaxed. Um, so he's an asset for this team. They're going to travel him to every single game, so obviously they think it works. Jarvis Green, the latest running back in for Dabo Sweeney. But, and he's Canadian from what we understand and has also done some work with some NHL teams. I would think hockey especially, and you call it, those guys are in insane shape. So I would think that if he can break his way into the, into the hockey locker room and get those guys to buy in, that would be a difficult, difficult spot to crack in for sure, I'd think. Trent Pierman came to Clemson as a walk on. He's a red shirt sophomore. Ezio Mume tackled around the legs by Rente Hinton for a four yard gain. Pierman was the superstar of the spring game, too. I mean, there were people that were wanting to buy Pierman jerseys after his performance there in the spring. Had a really nice game had some big plays created and it's nice to know that they have depth at the position they've had walk-ons in the past that have earned scholarships and and have played the quarterback spot never necessarily in a feature role but Pierman great to get some work here and a guy that has played pretty well in the stadium in the past albeit in spring performance his pass is incomplete Pierman's dad Danny longtime member of the staff here at Clemson his fourth year as the director of football scouting. He spent 12 years prior to that as Clemson's special teams coordinator and tight ends coach. Very much a family atmosphere here. Of course, Dabble Sweeney's had three sons play for him. And there are many others. And part of the Clemson family. Wise Seegers, the ball carrier. Kelvon McBride made the tackle. So I guess for now, at least the debate about the transfer portal goes out the window. Yeah. All the highly recruited players are playing well. The team is playing well. They're on their way to another one sided victory. Yeah, and a, re and a result against a team in NC State that has relied very heavily on the portal. And it's not, this is not the only indicator. But well, both ways can work. Absolutely. And you know, we talked with Dabo about that yesterday. He said it's Time not out. like we don't never go NC into the State. portal. He said we offered four seconds. or five players. 30 seconds. This past cycle, but none of them came, in part because you know a lot of guys were in the portal because they're not starting somewhere else. And they want to basically be assured they're going to start when they go to the new place. And Dabo Sweeney said, I'm not going to do that. We have very good players here. You're going to have to come and compete for the playing time. But this season, around the ACC, 235 players transferred into conference schools. Clemson, zero, as we said, not because they didn't try to bring in a few. Yeah, but, you know, I know he gets a lot of criticism for not being active in the portal. But when you hear him talk, and he talked to us about it a long time yesterday, you can understand why he does it the way he does. Yeah, and I think it, it eliminates the really, really bad years. I mean, when you have homegrown culture and guys that you go out and recruit and develop in the system, you avoid those years in which you fall off a cliff. And with the portal, I think it's a little higher risk and a little higher reward, perhaps.
But I do think that Dabo, that's the big misconception. Like, they are trying in the portal. They don't make a living trying in the portal, but it's not like they haven't offered guys, and they're just completely eliminating that from the arsenal of trying to evaluate and bring in talent. They'll do it. It just has to be the right guy, and it has to be at a position of need where they might go right in and start and compete. Well, as you said, they look at their team every year. They evaluate who they have, who's coming back, how good they think he is. And then they look at the portal. Who's in the portal? Do we think that guy in the portal is better than our guy? If so, do we go after that player in the portal? Or do we instead use that scholarship on a highly recruited incoming freshman? And he has the assistant coaches at each of their position group make that decision. Who basically say to the cornerbacks coach, do you like this guy in the portal or do you prefer this cornerback who we have a great chance to recruit? And the only downside to Dabo's approach is that there are going to be years where you have to rely heavily on young players like they did last year. And they had some growing pains early on. They get out to a four and four start. And then those freshmen at the time get more and more comfortable, they end up getting hot and winning five in a row down the stretch. So there are going to be times, if you go about it this way, where your roster is going to be really young and you might have some peaks and valleys in performance, but you're going to still maintain a very strong culture, which Dabo uh, believes is what has allowed them to win as many games as they have over the last 16 years. They won at least nine each of the previous 13, but of course the nine win season last year ended a streak of 12 straight 10 win or more seasons. Jack Smith the punt. Fair catch made by Jalen Coit. Here's Kevin. Ohio State went to the portal for key spots, including quarterback and Boog. Here's Will Howard, a true freshman, Jeremiah Smith. Yeah, they didn't go to the portal for him from no. Chamada, Madonna High School, Kev. We know how big he is, and he's just a freshman. The future is bright in Columbus. Fourth touchdown catch of the season. Ohio State up 49-14 over Marshall. Meanwhile, another true freshman, Caden Durham of LSU. 98 yards, two touchdowns last week against South Carolina. He was the star of the game. LSU's got to run the football against UCLA today, and he should do it. We'll see a lot of 29. LSU you hosting UCLA next on ABC back to you Sean. All right gentlemen thank you. Lex Thomas still the quarterback Hollywood smothers another good game for about nine. So how do you look at NC State going forward. You know they're another team that has won eight games or more each of the last four years under Dave Doran. I think there's plenty to feel good about offensively. I, I really do. I know that a lot of their numbers are going to be inflated because of their second half performance, but there were moments in the first half in which the offense did some things that I think you can build on. But defensively, it's back to square one. I mean, I, that to me is their defense from a number standpoint, from a leveraging the football standpoint, from a tackling standpoint, has really been disappointing. So I, I think you put that side of the ball on notice and you say hey look guys if you were a starter last week that's not you're earning your job this week and we're going to roll them every week like that. So I think it's full scale evaluation on defense but the offense I think there's enough to feel OK about given the challenges up against playing Clemson on the road. After a couple of carries from Smothers Demarcus Jones the ball carrier. And that touchdown that he scored on the last drive was his first carry of the year for a six yard score down to 220 to go. The NC State is one of only five power four programs that have won at least eight games each of the last four years. Clemson one of them with Alabama Georgia and Notre Dame so it's not all that easy to do. Next step for. Dave Dorn is getting over the nine win hurdle. Colby Baldwin tackled immediately by Sammy Brown. This is that gets us to the two minute timeout. 156 to go. Clemson on its way to victory. Clemson that much time away from its 800th victory all time. They're about to become the 14th school in the history of FBS football to win 800 or more games. Marcus Jones the second. Meanwhile on the other side this is just the second day ever that both NC State and North Carolina have allowed 50 or more on the same day. 
Right now, James Madison, Bob Chesney's team, has 63 on the board against the Heels in Chapel Hill with under 10 minutes to go. The only other time it happened, September 27th of 2014, NC State gave up 56 and a loss to number one Florida State. And North Carolina gave up 50 in a 50 to 35 loss to Clemson. So a historically bad day for a couple of the schools in the state of North Carolina. Lex Thomas runs across the 45 for a first down. How are you feeling if you're Duke right now, knowing you have to play later today? And yeah. App State on Thursday. Oh, yeah, App State. <laughs> it's been a rough week. Now you bring it up. What's in the water in North mm, Carolina boy. right now? A little concerned about that. Out wide, no gain. Well, Sammy Brown was in on the previous play. Not only did he win the Buckus Award, as we mentioned earlier in the game, he won two state titles as a wrestler. He ran a 10 700 meters and was a 4 0 student. Reminds <laughs> me of you. Yeah. Uh, wrestling and Buckus Award and. 10-7 in the 100. So you had the 4-0 student part. Did have that. Austin Randall is the injured player. Might be cramping. Went to the same high school as R.J. Mickens. Did you know that? South Lake Carroll, Dragons, Quinn Ewers. We're a powerhouse, as you can see you right did? now. Now I'm confused. Who are we talking about? <laughs> no, we're talking about, just talking about the Dragons. Had to get that in. As you can see, Hope's glad to see him walking off under yes. his own power. And in a timely manner. As there are planes warming up around the southeast, expecting ABC personnel to be on them. 35 seconds to go. Lex Thomas over the middle to Marcus Jones to the 40 yard line. Well, it's been a good fourth quarter. If you're looking for something to take away, they've outscored Clemson 14 to nothing. They've moved the ball well. Part of that, of course, is the caveat that Clemson has a lot of uh, deep down the depth chart players in there, but there's plenty of subs in for NC State as well. Jump ball, incomplete pass. Intended for Terrell Anderson. They did have their starting corner, Jaden Lucas, in there. And the tip of the cap, we already mentioned our great statistician, Mike Swanson, our spotter, Zach Rapatrizon. This is why he makes the big bucks. There are 100 guys playing, double numbers. Some don't have names on their backs. 14 seconds to go. This will be 10 straight losses at Clemson for NC State. Well, they're going to add on another touchdown. Terrell Anderson. A 40 yard score. And plenty of spirit still on the sideline, particularly from the starting quarterback, C.J. Bailey. And give them credit. They have played hard all the way to the end. That's what you're supposed to do, but yeah. not every team does it. No, they, they really have. I mean, and like I said, man, sometimes. And I know you're working against backups, and in some cases you have backups on the field. But man, sometimes just a little bit of momentum created in the second half of a blowout can be carried over to the next week. So let's hope that happens for NC State. Terrell Anderson, freshman from Greensboro, arrived in. January, time for spring practice. Originally from Detroit, he moved to the state of North Carolina when he was 15. The extra point was good by Vineset. It's 59 35 with five seconds to go. Lex Thomas with his first touchdown pass. And no matter the result, you can see the smile on his face when you yeah. get congratulated by the trooper, it's a highlight. Four out of the six for Thomas. 
The 53 yards and a touchdown. No Grayson McCall. Dave Doran said they do expect him back. They're not exactly sure when. And he made it pretty clear he didn't want to talk about it. It's a medical issue. He'll leave it to McCall and the medical staff. So here's Colin Smith. And it'll be a touchback. The 524 yards of offense for Dabo Sweeney's team. 59 points. They just missed scoring 60 plus in back to back games for the first time in program history, unless they pop one here. And I would think they would take an E. Klubnik 16 to 24 for 209 and about two and a half quarters, three touchdowns. He had a 55 yard rushing touchdown. Moffa over 100 on just seven carries, seven for 107. Nice day for Adam Randall leading the receiving core with five catches and a score. Paul Tyson is the fourth quarter back in. The great grandson of Bear Bryant takes a knee. And there are a lot here, here in Des the Just a couple of very impressive looking. Very.